Hello, my name is Sean Yamamoto, and this is a presentation of the paper titled Towards Deep Learning Models Resistant to Adversarial Attacks. Recent breakthroughs in computer vision and natural language processing have resulted in classifier neural networks being used for security purposes, like autonomous driving, facial recognition, and malware detection. Adversaries carefully choose input to try to fool the classifier, but if we make sufficiently robust models, we can defend against adversarial input. Here we have an example of an adversary fooling a classifier model. In this case, the fast gradient sign method is used to fool GoogleNet into classifying this input as a gibbon, even though it is clearly a panda. This is the saddle point problem that the authors identified as this paper's central object of study. This problem consists of an outer minimization and an inner maximization. The outer minimization is the model minimizing its expected loss by adjusting its parameters theta. The inner maximization is the adversarial attack maximizing the model's loss by choosing a perturbation delta to apply to input x. On the right we have a visualization of a saddle point. A saddle point is the result of a minimization along one axis and a maximization along an orthogonal axis. Additionally, the derivatives are zero along both of these axes. The significance of this saddle point problem is that we can measure the strength of an adversary using the inner maximization problem while also measuring the strength of a defense using the outer minimization problem. If an inner maximization of loss is close to zero, it's a definitive way of showing that the model is robust to that attack. This paper focuses on two different methods for adversarial attacks. The first is fast gradient sign method, or FGSM, and the second is projected gradient descent, or PGD. PGD is considered a much stronger adversary than FGSM. Both of these are first order attacks since they rely on first order information. Looking at the equation for the fast gradient sign method, first we have x, which is our input image, and then we have this perturbation term. Epsilon is the perturbation strength, sine is the sine function that maps the sine of its input to either plus or minus one, and then the input to the sine function is the gradient of the loss function with respect to x. PGD is basically a multi-step variant of FGSM, except we constrain how much it can perturb. We choose a set S as allowed perturbations, and if the FGSM run exits this set, we project it back onto the set. In this paper, perturbations are bounded by either L2 or L infinity norms. PGD runs FGSM on an input and uses this output as the next step's input. The algorithm runs until a certain condition is met, like the number of steps or a plateauing loss value. The authors use a convolutional neural network classifier for testing in this paper. They use two very popular datasets, MNIST and CIFAR10, which both have 10 classes. MNIST is a black and white digit dataset, while CIFAR10 is a RGB animal and vehicle dataset. The authors bound the allowable size of perturbations so that the model input is still perceptually similar to the original input. Here we have natural images along with their PGD L2 bounded counterparts. The labels below are the predictions of a simple CNN classifier. The authors investigate PGD local maximums by initializing PGD on a random point on the L infinity ball around the same natural example from the MNIST and CIFAR datasets. This randomly initialized value is within the set S of allowed perturbations, which is bounded by L infinity. PGD iterates 100 times, each time recording its loss against a standard model and an adversarially trained model. We notice that the losses plateau at similar values, and additionally, the adversarial models have much lower losses and much more similar values. The authors investigated this further by testing the final loss values of 100,000 randomly initialized PGD runs for five different images in the MNIST and CIFAR10 datasets. 
PGD was iterated until its loss value plateaued and this value was inserted into these histograms. Each run of PGD was initialized to a random point on the L infinity ball within the L infinity bounded set S. Blue data is from standard models and red data is from adversarially trained models. We can see that the loss values from standard models are highly concentrated and the adversarial models' loss values are even more highly concentrated. This suggests that the maximization problem in the saddle point problem is tractable since there are no outliers and the data is tightly coupled. These figures illustrate decision boundaries for classifier models. On the left, we have a standard decision boundary for standard input that correctly classifies all of our data points. In the middle, we have the effects of an adversary corrupting our inputs to be falsely classified. These points are shown by the red stars. In order to protect against these adversarial attacks, we need to adjust the decision boundary to be significantly more complicated, which is shown on the right. The authors investigate the robust effects of bigger models, which are models with more parameters. They test on three models, a standard model, a model trained on FGSM input, and a model trained on PGD input. These are the results for the MNIST dataset. From these graphs, we can see that larger models perform better, and training on adversarial input increases robustness against that adversary. Also, in order to attain high accuracy for PGD, the model must be trained on PGD input and be sufficiently large. The model trained on PGD input had high accuracy for all three types of input. From this, the authors suggest that PGD is the strongest known first order attack and that models robust to PGD are robust to all other first order attacks as well. These are the results for the CIFAR 10 dataset. The accuracies are lower than their MNIST counterparts, but we notice the same trends. Larger models have higher accuracies. Training on adversarial examples increases robustness against these adversaries. Robustness against PGD requires a model trained on PGD input, and the PGD model is robust to all three types of input. The authors investigated models trained on PGD corrupted input. We see that these models learn to be robust against this adversary with enough training. The authors tested these PGD trained models against different types of attacks. For the MNIST dataset, A is a white box attack where the adversary has access to the model's gradients. A prime is a black box attack where the adversary has access to an identical model that was independently initialized and trained on the same input and B is a black box attack where the adversary has access to a similar classifier network. Epsilon is 0.3 and lower epsilons resulted in higher testing accuracies. Bolded accuracies are the most successful adversaries, which are PGD with 100 steps for A, PGD with 100 steps for A prime, and FGSM for B. For CIFAR 10, A is a white box attack B is a black box attack using an independently initialized and trained network, and A nat is a black box attack using a copy of the network trained on natural examples. Epsilon is 8, and testing with lower epsilons resulted in higher accuracies. The model performed worse on the C4 dataset, but we see that PGD with the most steps is still the most successful adversary. For A nat, FGSM is the most successful adversary. The authors note that increasing this model's capacity may increase accuracy. Here we have the performance of adversarially trained networks against L infinity PGD with different epsilons. The models are trained with PGD input bounded by either L infinity or L2. The MNIST model is also tested against the decision boundary attack with 2000 steps. Across the board, we see that increasing epsilon decreases model's performance. We also notice that the MNIST model is successful against another first order attack called DBA, even though the model was not trained against DBA. In conclusion, the findings provide evidence that deep neural networks can be made resistant to adversarial attacks. With regards to the saddle point problem, 
the inner maximization problem is shown to be tractable with many distant local maxima having highly concentrated values. Models trained against PGD adversaries are robust to both PGD and other first order adversaries. The MNIST models were very robust against a range of powerful adversaries and large perturbations. The CIFAR-10 models showed a significant increase in performance but were not as robust as their MNIST counterparts. The authors predict that further research in this area will likely lead to increased robustness of the CIFAR models. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed my presentation.